It is August 4th, 2011, and this is a Infowars.com special report. Gerald Salente, one of the top trends forecasters in the world, will be joining us live via Skype to discuss the biggest one day plunge in the Dow Jones Industrial Average since the panic of 2008. The mainstream media and government are now having to admit we never left the recession and, well, quite frankly, are in a depression. I've been attacked for that. So is Gerald Salente and many of our other researchers and uh, contributors and experts to Infowars.com. And uh, we're going to be breaking down not only what's currently happening, but what we see coming on the horizon with Gerald Salente coming up here in just about 10 minutes. And then after we talk to Gerald, uh, the health ranger, Mike Adams, who broke the story yesterday during my live radio program, and since it's become a national news story, of a combined federal, state, and local raid on an organic food store operating in public view for years, and they confiscated papayas, uh, they confiscated watermelons, uh, and raw milk cheese, stuff sold at Whole Foods right down the road uh, here in Austin and across the country. And they're charging them with conspiracy, and they're being held without bond uh, here in uh, the new uh, freedom that we live under in the United States. But first, I wanted to get into the other uh, important stories that we are looking at today. Government narcotics trafficking and how it's tied into government gun running, not just in Mexico, but all over Central and South America and in Asia and the Middle East. Now, you'll remember last year, uh, because many U.S. military troops in Afghanistan were talking about the fact that they're forced to help grow opium, supply the fertilizer, transport, and security uh, to the Taliban growing the opium, that in response to that, uh, and the fact that it was coming out in the in the foreign press, uh, the people that control the mainline corporate media propagandists in this country came out and said, oh, you know what, on Fox, CNN, uh, BBC, uh, ABC News, it was all the same style newscast, same talking points. Yes, the troops helped grow the opium, and we just showed you a screenshot of the video that's on YouTube of Geraldo Rivera talking to the Marine Corps colonel, where he admits they help grow uh, and protect uh, the the opium. So I thought I would just show that to you before we get into the other news uh, and a little bit more of the background because we don't just show you the latest news, we give you the 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 background info, but uh, the, the federal government has been caught again shipping cocaine uh, into the United States and controlling certain pet drug cartels that they use to wage war uh, against their competition. You will remember that earlier in 2011, in April, the London Guardian broke, and then uh, Bloomberg got even more information on $376 billion of narcotics money out of Mexico uh, laundered through Wachovia and their parent company, Wells Fargo. Now, they had to pay a tiny fine on the 300 plus billion of 160 million, and no one got in trouble at Wachovia or Wells Fargo, despite the fact in the plea deal they admitted they were leasing and running the aircraft. Remember a few years ago, the CIA jet, torture jet, crashed in Mexico with four tons of pure cocaine? Uh, and again, well, Wachovia, according to MSNBC, then settled for $160 million. Uh, continuing. Uh, this dovetails with the new breaking news out of the El Paso Times, not breaking for our viewers. Uh, this is Paul Joseph Watson for Infowars.com, uh, April 27th, 2011. It was our great tipsters looking through the federal filings that sent us uh, this filing and uh, many, many others. Uh, it turned out this had been filed since September 24th, uh, 2010. We'll give you a screenshot of that and the memorandum. Uh, for the evidence that they brought in, and what was the evidence of one of the top Mexican drug cartel uh, leaders sent to Chicago to face drug trafficking charges? He brought into evidence Jesus Vicente uh, Zam Abada uh, Nabella, son of the biggest kingpin in Mexico, uh, El Mayo uh, Garcia. Well, it turns out, and they've now provided the documents, that that for five years he was uh, working under the orders of the United States government and laundering uh, the money through U.S. banks that they were ordered to launder it through. Thought we'd go over that background information before we gave you the mainstream media. Now, 
many months after we covered it, finally getting into it. And we commend uh, the uh, reporters, uh, Diana Washington Valdez at the El Paso Times, for covering it. Documents, feds allegedly allowed uh, Sinanola cartel to move cocaine to the U.S. for information. And it says as long as they gave them information on the other cartels, they would be left alone. And then Los Zetas, publicly trained, and we told you this six years ago before it even happened, from Selly Castile, former DEA agent, he said the U.S. has trained tens of thousands of Mexican troops. They're going to claim that they defect uh, the Los Zetas, uh, but really it's going to be a Western bank-funded war against the other three big cartels that aren't laundering their money through big U.S. banks now caught publicly laundering that money. Uh, continuing here, uh, here is our report from July 8, 2011. This has been reported by the federal police in Mexico. Uh, Los Zetas kingpin, we bought guns directly from the U.S. government. The ATF didn't just allow the sale of tens of thousands uh, to select drug cartels that they're allied with who are knocking out their competition. Uh, no, leaders of Los Zetas have also provided the Mexican police with documentation that the U.S. arms were shipped directly to them. And that's the report. If you'd like to see it, Los Zetas kingpin, we bought guns directly from U.S. government. Now, the reason I raise uh, that information is that we have now learned, and this is in major papers all over the United States, but it broke in Miami, that the ATF has been working with the DEA and the FBI to ship guns not just into Mexico, but into Honduras uh, and into cities like Miami, Chicago, uh, and Los Angeles, and that the drug gangs are being used to knock out their competition. So it's the big mega banks fighting over a $500 billion uh, a year industry, and the cartels that ally themselves with the CIA and select uh, U.S. and Western bank, uh, Western based banks are left alone and protected. Uh, others are killed. Now, all of this is basically imploding right now and coming out because honorable ATF uh, agents, and here's the Fox News report uh, dealing with that, have come out since five cops have been killed and three Border Patrol agents with guns they helped ship in and have said, look, we were ordered to do this. It's been going on for many years, and it's time for this to stop. So that is the rest of the story. Uh, as Paul Harvey uh, would say, on narcotics trafficking here in the United States and why our government is shipping guns into Mexico and other areas to arm the gangs that are allied with them to knock out their competition. Now, the domestic angle is that despite the fact the Justice Department's been caught perjuring themselves and lying to Congress, uh, that's now admitted, and that the White House was in command of this entire situation, despite that, they are still now trying to pass more gun restrictions in the U.S. in the name of curbing violence in Mexico, which they actually contributed to. So this is a false flag frame-up of the Second Amendment that has happened. And as the El Paso Times says, this could be as big as the Fast and Furious gun running. Well, it is as big. In fact, it's bigger. It is the rest of the story, and it is integrally connected uh, to the narcotics trade. Here at InfoWars, we interview guests who have been right over and over again. You know, the mainstream media could get it right, but they have a, they have a need to basically deceive the public into their agenda. No, we talk to folks that are true mavericks, true independents, that have a long-term track record of being frighteningly accurate so that our viewers uh, have a chance to look at the research and be ready for what's coming before it actually slams into us. And one of those guests is the top trends forecaster, Gerald Salente from Trends Research, best-selling author uh, and researcher. Gerald Salente, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's always great being on with you, Alex. Well, Gerald, I mean, I read your trends forecast religiously. I've uh, got it right here in my hot little hands. And you laid all this out several years ago. Uh, four years ago, you predicted the Tea Party. You predicted two years ago that the collapse will be ongoing. Let's go through it uh, and, and why you were able to make these predictions and what's happened today with the stock market plunging 500 points and now the mainstream media having to admit that we're in a big recession, maybe even a depression. And then once we've looked at what's currently happening and why you were right and able to predict it, let's look at what's coming next. Well, the way we were able to predict it, actually, it's been a long Ponzi scheme. 
Every time there's a collapse, you go back to the dot-com bubble burst in 2000. You know, we, we knew it was going to happen. It was a phony inflated market, a bubble. But when it burst, following that, 9-11 happened, and then they began to juice the economy with lowering interest rates to 46-year lows. They call it loose money policy. Adults call it cheap money policy. So what they've been doing is devaluing the dollar to build another bubble. They built the real estate bubble. They built a credit crisis crisis by inflating the world economy with cheap dollars. It's just like everyone was saying following this whole Washington drama queen spectacle with the debt ceiling. You know, oh, they're going, we're going to go default. We're not going to go default because we control the printing press as opposed to Greece, as opposed to Ireland, as opposed to Spain and Italy. We have the printing press. So all they've been doing is printing this digital money. So now the collapse begins in 2007. And we actually wrote in the trend alert that I'm going to read you in a little bit that came out in June 13th of this year, for the people to be on alert, on high alert, we wrote this in June, for the coming summer when most people are in a vacation state of mind. Because when you play back to 2007, that's when the panic of 08 began. The markets fell from 14,000 highs. And then you read the Turlet paper, a record, the New York Times back then, when the markets started to unravel in late July, and they said, and I'm not making this up, it's only a hiccup. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Relax. <laughs> well, then what we said was that when the, we took the domain name, the panic of 08 out after that. That's how sure we were. Now the panic of 08 hits, what happens? Henry Paulson, remember him? The guy, you know, that was the Treasury Secretary. The guy that gave himself 200 million of the bailout money and Congressman Stern said, who gave you the authorization? And he said, I did. Well, there you go. <laughs> so they, he creates TARP under Bush, the too big to fails. That was the four words, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, that spend the end of the American dream. All of a sudden, the too big to fails must be saved. And you, John and Jane Doe, you have to save them. And that's what you said at the time on my radio show uh, and in the reports we flew up there and interviewed you in New York. You said, look, this is the announcement that they're going to fully commit and feed the entire economy into the derivatives black hole. This is going to cause the greatest depression. And the New York Times called you the pessimist porn man. Every, I mean, you got attacked by scores of publications. It was like you were Satan himself. And where are they now, Gerald? I mean, go through, because you really did call it with precision, the fact that you've been right. I mean, I know you're not happy about being right. You tried to warn people. You tried to avert it. But we need to call out the people uh, well, who are be, little political prostitutes. Yeah, let, yeah, the prostitutes. Yeah, let's call them out. How about that little weenie wimpocrat, Alan Combs? I was on with him. And he cuts in and said, oh, that's Salenti. He's an alarmist. And I cut. Why? He said, what are you talking about, alarmist? You believe the baloney. And because I won't believe you a baloney, you're calling me an alarmist? How about this one? Forbes magazine. Go back to February 2009. They called it doomsday investing. My assistant at the time pulled all her money out of 401ks. And she they did a full story on it and put it into gold. Gold was selling at that time for about $700 an ounce. And you know what they said? She was overreacting. And they started making fun of me. Could you imagine that? That little weenie Steve Forbes, this guy that couldn't get a job shining shoes if his old man didn't leave him the company, that he's running into the ground. And they won't even do a retraction. Not one of them. Not one of them. You know why? Because they don't like what I say. Because I don't say things like that guy on Mad Money, you know, that, 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 uh, what, what's his name? Carnival uh, Barker. But yeah. the point is, is that you said buy gold when it's 700. Now I it's about buy six. Gold at, right, at 275. Exactly. But, the, but I mean, gold. at that point, it was 700. You're still saying buy. But, but you're wrong today because it's 1,600, more than doubled what it was three years ago. You're bad because you, your investment made money. In the modern America, when you're wrong is when you get praised. You are in trouble because you're right, buddy. And you know why else I'm in trouble? They don't like me. I'm not a member of the club. 
You know, maybe if my name wasn't Salenti, maybe they don't like, you know, maybe I should, I should, I should we be wearing Brooks Brothers than maybe uh, Gambino and Banana label, you know? Maybe that's the way they think of it. Because none of them, not one of them, has the manhood to bring me on and say that I was right. And I'll put my track record up against anyone's. There's no one, and I'm not bragging about this. I'm at it for 30 years. Yes, some people get some of the things right in different fields. But I have to say, and you read our publication, nobody's been right as much as we have in as wide variety. No, no, fields. you're right. I mean, I mean, you predicted, I remember interviewing you with some of the first times I interviewed you about four years ago, and you predicted there'd be a grassroots tax revolt against big government. You didn't call it Tea Party. That happened. I mean, right down the line, and, and that's why I interview you. That's why I research it. I mean, all the guests I have on, I only have maybe 10 regular guests. They're people that are over and over and over again right. Ron Paul, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, yourself, uh, Dr. Webster Tarpley, because you're all going off the same historical research, and again, the mainstream media could be doing this too. They consciously are lying. Why are they consciously deceiving people and demonizing gold while the richest families in the world are busy buying it up and hoarding it, Gerald? It's simple. They're prostitutes. NBC, CBS, ABC, NPR, those are the houses of prostitution. It's as simple as, no, it's as simple as that as you saw the Anthony Freda piece that, we did, that he did for us. That's all they are. They pleasure the politicians. Watch them. Look at their behavior. Look at them suck up and bow down. You know, it's, it's remarkable. So anyway, here is a trend alert, and I'm saying this because you've heard my saying over the year. Gerald Salenti's three, GC's three G's. Guns, gold, and a getaway plan. This is serious what's happening. But here's what that little guy over there at the White House, the White House prostitute, the, what's his name, James Carney, perfect name, the press guy. It, what, Carney, by the way, that's the slang word for carnival man. Here's what he said in relationship to today's 500 plus Dow fall off. There's no question that we have, this economy has faced headwinds this year, a variety of them, including the earthquake and tsunami in Japan. The increase in oil prices, energy prices, the result from the unrest in the Arab world, and the situation in Europe also. So our focus has to be on the things that we control, which is to take the necessary measures. I don't have a specific reaction to the market. Markets go up and down. Brilliant. No, this has nothing to do with the tsunami. It has nothing to do with the revolts in the Middle East. It has almost nothing to do with oil prices. It has to do with the Federal Reserve and the Wall Street gang robbing America right in front of our eyes. It has to do with stimulus. It has to do with top. It has to do with the, 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 the killing of the Glass-Steagall Act. It has to do with all of these measures. This, hey, remember those shovel-ready jobs, Mr. Connie? Where are those? Hey, how about this one? How about the prostitutes calling out Joe Biden? How about him last year saying that we were going to have the recovery, the summer recovery of 2010, and 500,000 jobs would be created a month? They created 18,000 last month. Why aren't the prostitutes calling him out? Why aren't they calling Bernanke out? Why aren't they calling Obama out and his economic team? Remember the brilliant Larry Summers? They told us that we were going to have an unemployment rate in 2010 at 7.2%. Not one of them calls them out. Well, Gerald, that's what's insane about this is that I set on record, all the other economists we talked to, you set on record, this is going to create a black hole of debt. Things are only going to get worse now. We're only giving the money to the bankers. We've got to pay taxes for the bailout money. Uh, we haven't left the recession. It's going into a depression. And, it's in a depression. And, and, and Obama depression. said, exactly, we're in a depression. And we've been in at least for a year or longer. And Obama said it's hope and change, free chicken in every pot. Now he says, now he says, 
oh, sacrifice, chip in, but not the big bankers who are making record bonuses and profits while laying off their customer service people while cutting their act actual staff. I mean, they have known what they were going to do. So this is what I want to get into now with you. You've been right. You've been accurate with great precision. We appreciate you joining us here. So while we're talking to the Trends Research Oracle, tell us the trends that are coming next in the economy, militarily, uh, socially. You predicted massive crime increases. Now we learn Austin's had a 30 plus percent crime increase in a year. I'm seeing neighbors' houses get robbed. Coffee shops I go to have their doors jerked off by trucks and everything stolen. I mean, I'm starting to live in a Mad Max scenario. The crime is exploding, but just like they say we're not in a recession or depression, they tell me crime's down, Gerald. They tell me the sky is red and up is down. So, so what are the new trends? You've predicted what would come. What's coming next? Get ready for the collapse. We're going to go into a horrible winter. There's no way out of it. And we are, again, we're, we're really urging people to pull in very tightly and, and also hang around like-minded people. Start putting your brains together. Try to help each other That's out. That's what I say. Having friends that are awake is more valuable than even gold, guns, and food. Do you agree? I do. And, and it's very important to get around those kind of people. And, and as I've said before, and I mean this sincerely, the strong are going to survive, and when I mean strong, it's, it's, not, it's not the body strong only. It, it's mental and spiritual, and I mean that in the fullest sense. And to be really get in shape spiritually, emotionally, and physically, because if you're ruled by fear, you lose. And by the way, very good, very good point to make, and everybody can see this. As you know, I'm a close combat practitioner. I work out with you know, attackproof.com guys. Uh, Brad Steiner, John Perkins, and, and when you watch a video that will tell you it speaks a million words, and that's the one of one of the richest men in the, wor men in the world, Rupert Murdoch, getting hit by a pie, a foam pie, at the, at the hearing in, in UK. He froze, and his little boy over there, James, James, the billionaire in waiting, he froze. The moral of the story is billions of dollars won't buy you a pair of cojones. Yeah, they should have exploded into action. You, you hit me, it. I'm going to attack you instantly. You got it. And then they talk about his wife slapping the guy. You watch that video. When I work with women that are real fighters, this woman went over. She didn't slap that guy. She was totally off balance and hit the ground and took the woman in front of her down. What we're saying well, is... Well, Gerald, I don't claim I'm a tough shape. guy. I don't claim I'm a tough guy, but I grew up in Dallas and got the hell beaten out of me many times. And I'll tell you, getting off the school bus and having three or four bullies beat me up when I was 10, 11, 12 is what made me what I am today. And I'm not Mr. Tough Guy. But if somebody starts something, I, I go into action immediately. And it's this lackadaisical attitude. You just hit it, not just of the general public, but the elite. This laying down, waiting for somebody else. You just said it. We should economically, societally, politically, we should be more explosive. We should be more proactive. I mean, continue, because I've been interrupting. Continue. Yeah, and, and so anyway, that's a very important message. Because when I say getting in shape physically, emotionally, and spiritually, it really means getting that fight back into you. Because any self-respecting adult that listens to a little carnival man like Connie, or it does sees Obama do is, you know, this guy can't talk without a teleprompter. They're setting him out in the White House lawns now on these big crates uh, and tables, these huge screens. You know, pretty soon they're going to have apps for guys to pick <laughs> up chicks. You know, they're going to be so lame from watching their leaders that can't speak spontaneously and have no courage. So courage, passion, respect, and self-respect are going to be very essential elements in this coming tough times. And I just want to read to you one little paragraph here that we said, and I mentioned this about the summer, and I'm saying this again because it's very important that people understand this. The moral of this story, this was the trend alert we put out that the collapse was coming, is not to let your mind take a summer vacation. 
Conditions are rapidly deteriorating and it is imperative to remain on high alert. Another financial, another violent financial episode is looming. It may be triggered by economics, e.g. defaults, debt crisis, contagion in Europe, a crashing US dollar, etc. What we're telling people is to stay on alert. You're always on yellow alert, don't be white. Always be alert, start learning everything you can right now. Don't be a it's passive jellyfish. Exactly. Exa and that's what America was all about, being self-sufficient, aware, and, and, and standing up for yourself. Gerald, continuing, any other future trends you yes. see unfolding? And then I've got a few news items I want to I want to throw at you and also want to talk about an idea you've got uh, about uh, basically the republic has been overtaken and the idea you've got about de uh, direct democracy. But first, any other trends? Yes, and, and unfortunately, Alex, they're going to lead us to war. Fake flag or real, and I say fake flag without being con a conspiracy theorist, because after all, Remember that wonderful Vietnam War that cost us some 60,000 U.S. soldiers? Yes. Killed over a million Vietnamese, destroyed their country, and wounded another 300,000 plus, plus all the uncounted Americans that have been mentally wounded from a Gulf of Tonkin incident that never happened? Do you remember the Iraq War that began on March 18th? March 18th, a day that, uh, that Barack Obama took us to war this year against Libya, the war that we waged because Saddam Hussein... Hold had on, he says it's not a war, it's a kinetic action. Well, no, no, the, the Bush one. No, but I'm being sarcastic, yeah. mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda. Yes, this is a kinetic action that was going to end in days and not weeks. They're going to take us to war. They're doing it, it's set up. And that's what we're most concerned about. That is our major concern because the economies are collapsing. And by the way, also, I want to repeat this, and I want everyone to listen carefully. Go back to 1933. They called the bank holiday in a time of an economic crisis, right after FDR got elected. Holiday. You can't get your money out of the banks. <laughs> they devalued your dollar. They made, you know the story, Alex. They made you sell all your gold back because in those days the dollar was pegged to gold. They made the people sell it back to the government at $20.62 an ounce or thereabouts. Right after they thought they got all the gold in, they repegged the price of gold to $35 an ounce, which meant that you just lost 40% of your dough. They're going to do it again. They, I believe there's going to be an economic 9-11 the last time they closed the Wall Street down, you couldn't cash out CDs. I know, I tried, couldn't do it. This time they're going to close down the banks. We have an emergency. It was caused by, you know it was caused by? They're going to blame the people that are buying gold. And by That's the way, gonna we're already seeing that. They're already blaming the Tea Party for not wanting to increase spending for what's happening. We saw that coming. And I want to tell you something. On, uh, on both sides of my family, no one turned their gold in. On my uh, mom's side of the family, uh, my, my, my mother's father's father, my great-grandfather, he refused to turn his gold in and said, let him come, and didn't. And then during the Depression and when it ended, he was basically set back up in business when hardly anybody else was. So I'll say it right now. I bought my gold. I paid taxes on the, on the money. It's mine, and I'm going to say publicly, if a bunch of fat cat criminal bankers tell me to turn my gold in because I was right and bought it when it was $300, $400, $500 an ounce, I'm not turning it in. And this is a public pledge. I think everybody should say, hell or high water, I'm not turning it in. Uh, what do you say? I'll, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. They're not going to take it from me. It's not, not going to happen. God bless you. And they're not going to be able to get their hands on it anyway, <laughs> Uncle Sam. Exactly. Yeah, grab this. <laughs> and the other thing, too, I have to tell you, on my side of the family, my grandfather was an Italian immigrant, and he was very proud to be an American. So when, when it happened, my father, may his soul rest in peace, said to my grandfather, my father was a wise man, he said, Pop, he said, don't turn this gold in. And my grandfather did because he wanted to be patriotic. Oh, 
And again, you want to be patriotic, but it's criminal offshore banks. They're not America. Just because they hijacked America doesn't mean they have the real authority. They're illegitimate. And it's us or them, Gerald. Gerald, I want to run through a few other items before you leave us. But please, because it's such invaluable information, tell us about your Trends Journal, how folks subscribe. Uh, tell people about your great websites. TrendsJournal.com, TrendsJournal.com. And you don't only get the Trends Journal. We have great features. We have... I do Trends in the News features twice a week to keep you up to date. We have Patrick Carlin, George Carlin's wiser and older brother. Uh, yeah, George Carlin, right, his wiser and older brother, he used to call him. And he does the lighter side of trends. And we have a new feature. It's a riot. Hans Himmler, America's favorite Nazi. <laughs> he, he escaped Germany. He hid in Argentina. And now he's come to America because he feels at home here. <laughs> so we're really making fun of the, the fascist state America is turning into. And also, for everyone listening, we know how difficult times are, and we have a discount request page. Just go to the page, you know, just fill out the information, and we try to make the Trends Journal available to everyone. Because we want to prepare people for what's coming ahead, and everyone that subscribes, and, you know, and I'm not bragging about this, but every day we get letters thanking us for, number one, waking them up, and also, and this is what I love the best, about inspiring them to grab your future. The future's in your hands. If you don't design your future, someone else is going to do it for you, and you're not going to like it. And you know who those someones are? They're the TSA, the FBI, the CIA, the FDA. You go right down the list, the GOP, the Democrats, Every one of these cats is standing online telling you to stand up straight and bend over. Exactly. That's what's so sick about a Nazi Germany or a Soviet Russia is when you study the history, and those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it, as you know, Gerald, is that it turns loose every miscreant who, who couldn't even be a garbage man, who couldn't be somebody working at McDonald's, these petty, dumbed-down control freaks who suddenly rule over all of us, we've got to defeat them. Now, here in closing, I want to raise to the Infowars.com viewing audience and folks watching at PrisonPlanet.com and across cyberspace right now, I want to raise a few other news items. It has now come out in federal court, and I covered before you came on the federal documents that have now been entered into court, and even the El Paso Times is covering it, that the ATF is shipping guns in to drug cartels to knock out their competition. It's not just to demonize the Second Amendment back at home. And that Los Zetas and other kingpins are also allowed to bring cocaine into America and are left alone. What is your view on government and big bank narcotics trafficking? Earlier I covered, of course, that Wachovia and Wells Fargo paid $160 million fine on 300 and. 70 plus billion in narcotics money in the last two years. It's a $500 billion industry. Who believes in the world that the government and the banks aren't involved in 500 billion? I'll tell you, if you'll believe that, I got a bridge I'll sell you. You know, you know people ask me about putting money in Panama. That's the last place I would stick it. You know, that, and look at all the money I mean. Everybody knows the game. This whole war on drugs is a sham. And remember those stories when Bill Clinton was governor of Arkansas and the CIA planes? Yeah, coming? Mina. Yeah. You know, they, they're out of the news. People forgot about those things. No, there's nothing that the government says that I would trust. And are they, I mean, look at the criminal activities that they're caught in. How about this one? I mean, yeah, I mean is that such a far-fetched idea when you consider the murderous acts that the American government is committing every day? with the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Oh, and by the way, the nomenclature's changed, you know, Alex. Oh. American soldiers don't get killed anymore. You know who gets killed? NATO troops. Ah. Oh. Incredible. Uh, yeah, so, so they're murderers. You know, it's mass murder. But you can't call a mass murderer because, hey, they're the Harvard, Princeton, Yale Club. Well, well, Gerald, uh, what do you make of, now it used to be every six months, now it's every week and almost every day, Amish selling eggs, people selling pumpkins or strawberries on the side of the road. I mean, I've had family does that selling peaches out of orchards. A few orch we used to have orchards until a blight hit them a decade ago and killed them. 
uh, I see reports of stores have been open many years selling papayas and organic watermelons and, and uh, organic cheese, and they have more than 100 police raid them, fed, local, you name it, and then they give them a $120,000 bond, charge them with conspiracy for running a public local grocery store in Los Angeles. I mean, sometimes, even though I think I'm awake, it's like the twilight zone. And then I saw the videos that Mike Adams released of this happening. He's joining us next. And the police look like central casting criminals. I mean, they look slimy and sneaky and bullyish and evil. And it was like, my God, have the criminals totally taken over. When banks can steal trillions and launder hundreds of billions in drug money, and but parents in Chicago can't pack their kids a school lunch because they say we can't trust parents. That's a quote. And you can't grow a garden in your front yard in, a, in, in places like uh, uh, Michigan. I mean, it, it, it's like at a certain point, when does it end? And then you realize we ain't seen nothing yet. It's going to get even crazier. Not land of the free, home of the brave, land of the cowards, home of the slave, Gerald. You got it. How, you forgot those two, three little girls down in Georgia that was selling lemonade that got busted. Oh, all over the country they can't have it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, they, they, were, they were saving money to go to a water park. I was thinking, yeah, they should have gone to Dick Cheney's waterboard park, you know? <laughs> Maybe that's the next step. No, this is, a, this, is, this, is the, this is why we have Hans Himmler, America's favorite Nazi. This is pure fascist behavior. Again, people rail about Obama being a socialist and a Marxist. Socialism is egalitarianism. This is fascism, the merger of state and corporate powers. What they're doing is they're busting all of the entrepreneurs as the greedy bigs take more and more control. Name the industry, Alex. Agriculture, handful control it. Corp uh, broadcasting, handful control it. Automobiles, handful control it. Food processing, handful control it. Name any industry, any one. Cereals. Soda? And they're greedy. They're even destroying their own market to consolidate power more and more and more. And there's one thing I know our founders were against is something our country wouldn't put up with is monopolies. And, Gerald, do you think that the, the bigs have bit off more than they can chew and that when the history books are written after this hell that's coming that we are going to finally defeat these monopoly men? We will only defeat... They haven't bitten off more than they can chew because after it, they finish chewing it up and spitting it out, they just go somewhere else to chew. They're like a tapeworm that can't, is never satisfied. Or locust. So that's, yeah, locust, very good. So no, and until the people, again, regain their dignity, respect, and courage, and self-respect, you know, for others, respect for others and self-respect, it's not going to change, which is one of the things we're talking about that you, you alluded to, direct democracy. And I'm saying, let the people vote. We do not have a representative form of government. The only people that Bonner, Bush, Obama, Reid, Pelosi, McConnell, you go through the list, up and down, sideways, the only people they represent are the people that give them money. The you're very a, you're powerful, absolutely right, Gerald Salente. And it's like asking... Rich, and the special interests. Only a little kid would believe that these people represent us. So bottom line, it's our naivete and our lack of action and being in a comatose state that empowers it. Gerald, we look forward uh, to continue to uh, interview you as you track the trends. Uh, Gerald Salente from the Trends Research Institute, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me, Alex. Thank you so much for what you're doing to wake folks up. All right, my friends, that's Gerald Salente. We appreciate you watching this InfoWars.com special report. We're going to go to break and come back with Mike Adams on the front line of defending your right to eat organic food and to have access to vitamins and minerals, something that the uh, globalist Nazis that run this country do not want you to have access to. They've been attacking and raiding farms that produce fresh milk, people that sell cheese, and even mangoes and watermelons. That'll get you a $120,000 bond and a charge of conspiracy. You want to ship cocaine in for the government, that's fine. But don't provide the public with mangoes, papayas, uh, or strawberries. We'll be right back with Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, with breaking information. Stay with us.
Infowars.com for 16 years has led the charge against the technocrats. We have had unrivaled success in unlocking minds, expanding paradigms, and rallying the people to face the new world order. No one can deny that our media operation is the tip of the spear, and it's because of our success that we have a responsibility to intensify our operations against the globalist 110%. We're only a month away from launching a weeknight news broadcast. The social network is nearing completion as well. The free newsletter is reaching hundreds of thousands. Please spread the word about InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Sign up at the top of InfoWars.com for the free InfoWars Insider email with exclusive video and text reports as well as breaking news. Look in the mirror. You are the resistance. It is up to us, the InfoWarriors, to take Take the initiative and to defeat the globalist. Thank you for joining us this evening, the 4th of August, 2011. And you have come to the uh, last 10 minutes or so of this special Infowars.com nightly news report. I want to remind viewers that coming up on September 1st, uh, that's a Thursday, we're going to start a, a transmission that will go out live at 7 p.m. Central every night. But we'll also begin adding multiple uh, live uh, special reports with in-depth interviews as well and other special documentaries here at PrisonPlanet.tv, and we're very excited. We've had a lot of different uh, cable networks, not just here in the U.S., but worldwide, request this show in the last few years, and so that's why we've developed it here, and I want to thank you for joining us. We just got done talking to Gerald Salente, the top trends forecaster, in detail about the designed implosion and depression that has been created to bring the American people to their knees, the private banking cartel. We also covered... Uh, the incredible news in federal court coming out uh, dealing with the fact that not only has the ATF, FBI, DEA been shipping guns to Mexico, Miami, Honduras, Latin America to knock out their drug dealing competition, but that cocaine has also been shipped into the U.S. with the U.S. government's knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, this corruption is coming to the surface. They're admittedly growing opium in Afghanistan and admitting it. Uh, what's coming next the reason they're having to admit all of this is because the alternative media has been exposing it. So we've had some great victories. They're going from denying it to trying to hide it in plain view and hoping that you're just conditioned to accept it, that they're going to put you in prison or your son or daughter in prison if they're caught with drugs that they're shipping in. Decriminalization, legalization is the answer. Treat it as the disease it is. Don't send Rush Limbaugh to prison for using synthetic heroin give him treatment. And don't send some young street kid who's 16 caught with heroin to prison, give them treatment as well. Let's not, let's not be hypocrites. Now, joining us in studio live is Mike Adams, the health ranger of naturalnews.com. And of course, he broke with us yesterday on the radio and the Drudge Report also carried it. It's a big national story. Uh, the latest in SWAT team raids on Amish, people selling eggs on the side of the road or tomatoes. Um, feds, local, state, all raiding and destroying papayas and evil stuff uh, like watermelons. I know we're defending watermelons now. We're very evil. Uh, raw milk. This is a public club. We have them here in Austin. They sell the stuff at Whole Foods, the raw uh, milk cheese, and they're setting a very dangerous precedent here. They're declaring war on the alternative uh, economies that are forming as people demand healthy and clean, non-irradiated, non-GMO, non-antibiotic, growth hormone, garbage. And the man uh, who is at the center of researching this, Mike Adams, joins us to give us breaking news and the latest developments, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mike Adams, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Great to be on your show. I uh, love your show here, by the way. Great interview with Gerald. You just had... Um, so the situation that we do have some additional breaking news, but I, I want to give a, a summary for those who may be new to this just very quickly. The, the feds combined with state sheriffs and LAPD to conduct a multi-agency raid on this buyer's club, a private buying club that was selling raw milk and raw cheese, raw dairy products. 
This raid resulted in law enforcement pouring thousands of dollars worth of raw milk down the drain, confiscating and basically pillaging this entire store, taking their entire inventory, including watermelons, including mangoes, including honey, and the raw milk and cheese that we mentioned, and leaving this story, store with, or I'm sorry, buyer's club, private club, with nothing to sell. And then they charged the owner and two other individuals with conspiracy to commit felony crimes. So the owner, James Stewart, had been brought up on, on 13 charges now, including several felonies, and his bail was set at $123,000. That was yesterday. This morning, there was a big protest at the steps of the county courthouse in L.A., and I, I believe because of this public pressure, the bail was dropped from $123,000 down to $30,000 today. We've also been told that Victoria Block, who is the L.A. County uh, liaison for the Weston A. Price Foundation, you know the foundation, they're, they're very much into nutrition and teaching people not to eat processed foods. They're evil the, folks. They don't yeah. want us eating MSG and GMO and mercury-filled stuff. They're very evil. Exactly. But Victoria has now been set free. But it looks like James Stewart and Sharon Palmer, who have been brought up on conspiracy charges and also the charge of mislabeling cheese. This is one of the more serious charges apparently i don't mean to make this a laughing matter because no it is ridiculous it I is mean, yeah only in america you can't have a garden in your yard and there's not even a law they try to put you in jail for 93 days this is outrageous nazi soviet style tyranny but in a sense alex that's what's so great about this because it is waking people up to the reality that these environmental police and by the way, this case is going to be prosecuted by the FDA's environmental prosecutor. That's the word that we're getting right now. So they have a special inquisitor. Exactly, exactly. And this, this gets into the green police and the cops running around with handcuffs if you burn too much fuel no, or they're acting a like, styrofoam cup. They're acting like a papaya that's organic is cocaine. Well, well they are. And remember that there are children and infants who depend on this goat's milk for their own nutrition. I mean, there are families, women who can't breastfeed their babies that have been buying this raw goat's milk to keep their babies healthy. And now, today, they don't have that food. We have old letters of my father's grandfather, who was a doctor in East Texas. And when a woman wasn't lactating enough, as happens quite a lot, to feed the baby, they would recommend first the milk of a goat or of a female donkey, a Jenny. Jenny. Now, again, my great-grandfather was Al-Qaeda. I mean, he, should he be arrested? <laughs> yeah. Well, if he were doing that today, he might very well be arrested. Uh, and remember, for a long time, Alex, people on the left would, would see your show or read my website, and they would say, this can't be true. The green police aren't bad. They're protecting the environment. This can't be true. Well, now, today, thanks to this multi-agency raid, they're seeing the truth. So now, in a sense, the L.A. County Sheriff's Department raid with the FDA and with the CDC is lending credibility to what you've been warning about. And that's the other years. good news. That's the other good news. There were major Hollywood stars just from the radio show and naturalnews.com and infowars.com that within an hour showed up and were confronting the police and saying, shame on you. And i got to tell you, the video of the cops that you've posted, I mean, they look like something out of central casting of, of uh, Goodfellas. Talk about that and let's talk about them having to reduce the bond and where this is going. Well, it's like when, when you talk about police recruiting and how they won't recruit anyone with an IQ above 80, that's because they don't want people to question common sense. So if they're pouring nutrition down the drain, even though there are starving children next door, these cops with the low IQs, they won't even question that, oh, we're ruining food or we're burning books or whatever they happen to be doing. Yeah, the it's image okay. of a truck and watermelons being thrown away and milk being dumped in a gutter. I mean, this, this, is, this is so absurdist, it's like a Monty Python skit. It, it, it's George Orwell in 2011. It, it's, it's Big Brother, but now they're going after your food and, and not just your books and not just watching you at every corner. Uh, it's, it's out of control. I call it government-sponsored terrorism against innocent small business owners and farmers. And I think that's an accurate assessment of what it is. Oh, we've tried to go for years, and some of the guys in the control room as well told me about it. I'd go to the farmer's market, and they would say, well, I can't sell it officially, but come over to my truck. You probably want to buy this. Yeah. And I'd get a gallon of milk, and the stuff tasted sweet, delicious. My kids could tell, just like real cheese tastes great. And 
they had cops there harassing them. They had to stop. No law, but secret police creeping around. But I can take you to East 11th, literally five miles from here. They leave crack dealers alone. <laughs> of course. But, but yeah. I can't buy raw milk now in Austin. And there's a reason for that. You, you wonder why the CDC was present at this raid. See, the CDC knows that it has to exist based on the hype of infectious disease. Now, if you drink raw milk, because it has probiotics in it, you insulate your body from foodborne illness. And, and probiotics you're not going to get in the store. Exactly. Start over, I'm sorry. We're, we're talking about living microbes in the milk, which are supposed to be there, that the baby calves drink. It's in, it's in mother's milk and humans as well. The probiotics are there to make the baby healthy. If you drink more raw milk, and by the way, I'm not a big milk drinker. I don't, eat, I don't do dairy myself, but I support raw milk because of this principle. But it will make you healthier and more immune to infectious disease. But in the old days, doctors would tell you when you're sick, drink raw milk. I mean, it's, it's not rocket yeah. science. Well, exactly. I mean, it's like this country was founded on raw milk and growing industrial hemp. You know, it was founded on the idea that we should have liberty and freedom and in individual choice about our foods and our medicine and what we wish to do with our private lives. But today, region after region, the, the government just keeps taking over our lives. Our money supply from 1913 on, of course, our, our, our medicine with Obamacare, and now our food supply with the food safety bill that was just passed into law last December. We are now seeing the, the, the long arm of that food safety bill kick in. And it's, it's actually, it's a barrel of a gun pointed at your head that says, don't drink what you want. But Mike, devil's advocate, why don't you just give yourself to the new world order and admit that you're a freak and that everybody else is a freak who says that a lady should be able to grow tomatoes in a flower box in her front porch in, in Oak Park, Michigan. I mean, you're actually <laughs> telling me in Land of the Free, Home of the Brave, that prisoners, I I'm sorry, banker minions, I mean citizens, should be able to grow tomatoes or eat real cheese. I mean, this is this is freaky. I mean, folks are waking up to our irradiated food and everything else now, and they're wanting to go back to what humans had for hundreds of thousands of years. And you're and you're here defending people eating watermelons. Well, it looks, do you, do you want to apologize right now? I, I'm not willing to do that, but I, I will say that for the first 30 years of my life. I, I was a, going along with the mainstream system. Good. I was taking the pharmaceuticals and, and the junk foods. But once you wake up, Alex, and this is the beauty of what you do and, and what we do at Natural News and the, the readers that tune in to, and the listeners, once you wake up, once you take the red pill, there's no going back. You can't take these facts out of your brain. You can't dumb yourself back down after you've awakened to the reality of what's really going on. And so that's what you're doing out there with your show, Alex, is you're, you're lighting people's brains up so that they now have an awareness and begin to question. And the raw food actually is so good for you that it makes your mind work even better. And healthy food is superfoods so that you can begin to question even more. You never go back after Well, Mike, that. I have a CBS News clip where they say mercury is good for kids' brains. I, I saw that clip. And, 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 and so we've got to decide, is mercury good or are with you joining the extremist, either mercury's good for you or we're joining the extremist, Mike Adams. And of course they admit mercury is deadly, but, but we've gotten to this insane juncture here where we decide to fully submit to this technocratic tyranny or whether we stand up. Now, now in closing, any other points you haven't added about this uh, SWAT team, multi-jurisdictional federal raid on a public store where they have guns out so they can show the jury and say, see, we had guns out. They're bad. You know, I mean, it's all part of uh, theater. I, I, any other points you want to add yes. about that? And, and then in closing, the big assaults right now we have where they're trying to totally legalize all new GMO coming out while restricting the tools to fight it, normal, clean, good food, also known as Al-Qaeda. Remember, this is being prosecuted under environmental prosecution from the FDA. Now, the greatest environmental crime of our century, Alex, is GMOs. Why is that crime not being prosecuted or even investigated or even properly regulated? But it only by sterilizes people and causes cancer. But it, it is the biggest environmental crime of, of, of human civilization, not even the century. I'm talking about from the dawn of, of humans walking on this planet. GMOs are the biggest environmental crime of all. Now, the other point is that this attack on raw some foods is not just an assault on raw milk and raw cheese. It's also an attack on your right to enter a private contract 
with an organization that represents cows and chickens and eggs and, and farmers. Well, they have that in Austin. You go buy part of a cow or a whole cow, and then you go there and, and get the milk. I mean, that's that's not America. No, but I mean, listen, you're is... not listen, listen. I know you want to claim that cows used to eat grass. Everybody knows they're fed ground up, you know, rotten meat. I mean, look, you you push your extremism long enough. Well, I, I, I'm pretty sure I saw cows eating grass on my way Lies, over to your studio Al-Qaeda, here today. Conspiracy. And you've got cows uh, a couple miles down the road that are still eating grass. And uh, I raise chickens, and they're free range, and they do you produce eggs. You raise chickens? I, I have to admit, I Call raise chickens. Call the FDA, folks. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, literally, if I come in here and, let's say, barter with you, I'll give you some of my eggs, and you give me some superfoods, then we could both be arrested for, as, and charged with conspiracy under the current laws. As we should. Apparently. So wh- where else is, I mean, I, I'm being sarcastic, illustrating absurdity by being absurd, but what I've gotten from you here today, Mike, is that this is awakening the sleeping giant. Very much so. The other important takeaway message from this is that people out there Pay attention, because this could come to a farm near you. This could come to your farmer's market, your co-op, your CSA. It is coming. It, it, it is. It's, I, mean, remember, I can't it, buy milk. I could buy I it for three years. I can't get it down here. It's, they won't stop the happening. crack dealers selling CIA cocaine down the street. they got to harass them on. They're selling some devil milk. This is happening right now. If we don't take a stand and stop this immediately and take back the power to enter, the, the right to enter into a private contract, the right to choose what we eat, we're going to lose these freedoms forever. And we will not get them back unless there's a complete collapse and a new society of some kind. Well, Mike, you should support freedom from freedom. And that's what Homeland Security is trying to bring us. Mike Adams will continue to watch this as it develops and other important stories at the invaluable naturalnews.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Always good to join you. All right, my friends. Well, that's it for this special edition of InfoWars Special Report. Again, coming up September 1st, in less than a month, we have the nightly show at 7 p.m. Central at InfoWars.com. The only example I've seen of something like this, well, there's two examples. Uh, after Lenin died, Stalin wanted to take control of the satellites of the Soviet Union. So he said, you can't have your own farm or garden. You've got to only work in the co-ops. And as we know, tens of millions of Ukrainians and others then died. And they would take you to a camp. They would arrest you uh, if you grow, uh, grew your own food. And, uh, of course, Mao did something uh, similar in his Cultural Revolution, Great Leap Forward. And the Chinese estimate 85 million died uh, the U.S. government estimates 66 million, 66 million, 85 million, whatever. This is a really bad idea. But as the U.N. said in their 1996 World Food Forum, they will use food as a weapon. As Henry Kissinger said in the State Department Memorandum 200, they would shut down local domestic production of food. And the, the, the uh, different uh, departments, the Department of Agriculture has told my own family and farmers and ranchers all over America, sell out to the big guys or get out of business. And that's what this is all about. Please spread this report to everyone you know. Download it for PrisonPlanet.tv and forward it to your friends and family. If you see it on YouTube, get it out to everybody. Because the light of day, the light of truth will expose these folks. Again, I'm Alex Jones reporting for InfoWars.com in this special report. Great job with the crew. And we'll see you back live on the radio, 11 a.m. Central weekdays and Sundays, 4 to 6 p.m. Now get out there and take on the tyrants. Thank you for watching.